हेलो एंड वेलकम टू बैजूज लास्ट वीक वी डिस्कस द वेरियस फैसेट्स ऑफ द डिसीजन टेकन बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू बैन कैटल स्लॉटर दिस वीक वी विल डिस्कस समथिंग दैट हैज कॉट द अटेंशन ऑफ वन एंड ऑल एंड दैट इज द लॉन्च ऑफ जी एस एल वी मार्क थ्री दैट कैरी इज द लेटेस्ट कम्युनिकेशन सैटेलाइट जी सैट नाइनटीन बट वट इज सो स्पेशल अबाउट जी सैट नाइनटीन Why is it that everybody is talking, discussing, and debating GSAT 19 and GSLV Mark 3? What is so remarkable about this event? We'll discuss all this in today's lecture. We'll discuss what is GSLV Mark 3, and we will discuss what is GSAT 19. But first up, let us start with something that was very remarkable for India that happened a few years back, and that was the launch of Mangalyaan. With the launch of Mangalyaan. India became the very first country to have launched a Mars mission in its very first go. Things obviously did not go very well with many of the other countries. New York Times even came with this cartoon, which tried to depict that there is some elite space club of which India is not a part, and now India is knocking at the door with the launch of Mangalyaan. So they tried to ridicule us with this particular cartoon, but then. This year, something very remarkable happened, very unique, and that was the launch of one hundred and four satellites in a single flight. This happened when we launched PSLV C thirty seven. Now, out of these one hundred and four satellites, one hundred and one satellites were foreign, and only three were Indian satellites. And with this, we had a very apt reply to the cartoon of New York Times. and that was when it shows that india is now the elite space club and all the other countries are knocking at its door what are we discussing we are discussing the advancement of india in the field of space research and specifically what are we discussing we are discussing the latest launch of isro that is gslv mark 3 the first developmental flight of gslv mark 3 that carried gsat 19 but first let's start with what we have lined up for today's lecture so today's lecture is basically going to be about gslv mark 3 and gsat 19 but to understand that we'll have to go little bit into the basics and that's why we'll start with something that is called as a launch vehicle and once we have discussed the launch vehicles we'll discuss two things which are very commonly seen in the newspapers one being pslv and the other being gslv so we'll discuss the basics of what is pslv and what do we mean by gslv and finally from there we'll go to the discussion of gslv mark 3 that was our latest launch and then we'll discuss the gsat 19 satellite the features of this satellite and the advantages of using this satellite so let us start with launch vehicles so launch vehicle in simple terms is the carrier or the vehicle that will carry the payload or the satellite into its orbit so this is the basic meaning of what is a launch vehicle so now if we have to discuss launch vehicles we'll have to go briefly into the history of launch vehicles in india and when we talk about the history we actually talk about three phases of launches in india what are these three phases these phases for us are basically the past the present and the future so when we talk about the past the past phase is also known as the historic phase or the developmental phase or sometimes also called as experimental phase in this phase we saw two kinds of launch vehicles one which was slv or satellite launch vehicle and the second one which was advanced satellite launch vehicle this slv was first time successfully used to carry rohini satellite and this was used for sros after that these two retired and then we came into our present 
which is also called as the launch phase or the operational phase and in the launch phase or the operational phase we have PSLV and GSLV so we'll discuss the details of PSLV and GSLV when we talk about the future which is also sometimes called as the advanced phase is when we talk about three variants of launch vehicles that is GSLV Mark III, RLV and Scramjet. We will discuss GSLV Mark III in today's lecture. Just one line for each one of these two. What do we mean by RLV? RLV stands for Reusable Launch Vehicle. A launch vehicle that can be reused. Because when we talk about the PSLV or GSLV, these are the launch vehicles that are expendable and cannot be reused once they have launched the satellite. Talking about scramjet, scramjet is something or a kind of engine in which S stands for supersonic, C stands for combustion. So this is a supersonic combustion ramjet engine. And what does this engine do? It takes the oxygen from the atmosphere. We require oxygen to burn the hydrogen fuel which is present inside the launch vehicle. So normally what we do is we carry huge amounts of these oxidizers which can oxidize the fuel and help in combustion. So what scramjet will be able to do is that it can take oxygen from the atmosphere instead of carrying the oxidizer itself. So what will happen in this case is that the launch vehicle weight will decrease. And when the launch vehicle weight decreases, we can increase the amount of payload in the launch vehicle. So that is why scramjet is very, very important. And taking the discussions a little further, if we talk about SLV and ASLV, SLV had a capacity of only carrying 40 kgs. When we talk about ASLV, ASLV was capable of carrying up to 150 kgs into the orbit. But when we talk about PSLV, PSLV has a capacity of up to 1750 kg and when we talk about GSLV, GSLV has a capacity of up to 4000 kgs and that is where GSLV Mark III is important because here we increase our capacity to 8000 kgs. So let's now discuss what do we mean by PSLV and what do we mean by GSLV. So when we talk about PSLV, PSLV is a short form for Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Originally, PSLV was introduced by India to launch remote sensing satellites. So all the remote sensing satellites were supposed to be launched using PSLV. But PSLV has gone many steps further. Not just did we launch all the remote sensing satellites using PSLVs, we also started launching foreign satellites. We also started launching navigation satellites and all the launches started happening through PSLV. So, as far as PSLV is concerned, it has been named as the workhorse of ISRO because all your launches are happening using PSLV. So next, let's just see what is PSLV and what are the different variants of PSLV. So when we talk about PSLV, PSLV is a four-staged launch vehicle. A four-staged launch vehicle. So what do we mean by four stages? If we consider this to be a satellite, by four stages we mean the four stages of fuel. So this will be a solid stage, this will be a liquid stage, this will be a solid stage and this will be a liquid stage and this is where your payload or the main satellite will be placed. So what do we mean by a solid stage and a liquid stage? Solid stage means here we are using solid fuel and here we are using liquid fuel. So if we talk about solid fuel, what is the solid fuel used? That is HT, PB or hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene. So this is the solid fuel which we are using in PSLV. Now when we talk about liquid fuel, there are two kinds of liquid fuel which we use normally. The first one is UDMH or that stands for 
unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine so this is the liquid fuel which is used in the second stage when we talk about the third stage we talk about again a solid stage fuel that is htpb and when finally when we talk about the liquid stage here we use a mixture of two that is mmh plus mon mmh stands for monomethyl hydrazine and mon stands for mixture of oxides of nitrogen so this is the liquid fuel which is being used at the topmost level so you might have observed that when a satellite takes into its orbit you'll see that one part starts falling one after the other it detaches from the main satellite and it falls off so these are the various stages so one after the other each part will fall off into the surface of the earth so these are the various stages now when we talk about pslv there are actually three variants of pslv that isro is using so when we talk about the three variants let's just understand the basic differences between the three variants so when we talk about the three variants the first one is pslv ca which stands for core alone variant the second one is pslv g and this pslv g stands for the standard variant and the third one is pslv xl so pslv xl is the extended variant or as xl stands for extra large also so these are the three variants now what is the difference between the three variants so if you talk about the three variants the main difference is in terms of the payload capacity when we talk about the ca variant or core alone variant it can carry up to 1100 kgs to the lower earth orbit when we talk about pslv g or the standard variant it can carry up to 1600 to 1650 kgs to the lower earth orbit when you talk about pslv xl we are talking about a capacity of up to 1750 kg on to the lower earth orbit so what is the lower earth orbit in basic terms basically let's suppose this is our earth this is your atmosphere then we can define various regions so anything from the atmosphere up to this point can be the lower earth orbit then after that we can define the second one which can be called as the medium earth orbit and finally anything that is beyond medium earth orbit can be defined as the higher earth orbit so if it is the lower earth orbit these are the load carrying or payload carrying capacities of the different variants of the pslv apart from this if you have to talk about in terms of the technical specifications what are the differences the very first difference the most important difference is in terms of strap boosters so when we talk about pslv g or pslv xl these are the two which would have some strap boot boosters also tied around the satellite so that they can provide more amount of thrust and that is why they can increase the payload carrying capacity of these variants but when we talk about a core alone variant that does not have any strap boosters so that becomes one of the main reasons why it cannot carry a higher amount of load so this is one thing which you should remember first in terms of payload capacity this is the difference between the three and secondly in terms of technical specifications there is an absence of strap boosters so in terms of strap boosters they are six in number in case of pslv g and same is the case with pslv xl as well but each of these strap boosters have a higher capacity in case of pslv xl and that is the main reason why the payload capacity of xl will be much higher than pslv g now let us discuss the frequency with which the various variants of pslvs have been launched so if you observe here we started first with all the standard variant or that is pslv g after that the trend changed and we launched more and more of the core alone variant 
but with rising requirements and the international market we have seen a lot many excel launches happening in the past few years so if you go by absolute numbers if we talk about pslvg then up till now we have seen a total of 12 launches of the g variant if you talk about pslvca then we have seen a total of 11 launches of the same and compared to that if you talk about the excel variant we have seen 16 such launches that have happened until now but then there is a problem and the problem is that the highest capacity as we just saw for a pslv launch vehicle is just 1750 kg the problem is most of your navigation satellites and most of your communication satellites will have a payload higher than this it will be in the upper limits of 2000 kg and sometimes also more than 3000 kg so when this is the case pslv cannot be used and that is when we started to think about building a satellite launch vehicle that can carry higher payload capacity and that is when we started thinking about the gslv launch vehicles that for the first time were built keeping insat satellites in mind and insat satellites were supposed to be communication satellites so when we talk about the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle or gslv what are we talking about first we are talking about a satellite launch vehicle which can be used to launch heavy payloads payloads which are in the excess of 1750 kg which cannot be launched using a pslv launch vehicle secondly we are looking at a satellite launch vehicle which will be able to launch communication as well as navigation satellite for us so this is the basic thing about gslv that it will be able to launch heavier satellites and mostly it will commence of the communication satellite as well as navigation satellite now as we talked about pslv we talked about the variants of pslv in this case also in case of gslv we have three variants which are called as mark 1 mark 2 and mark 3 so what is the difference between these three variants we'll come to it but first let's understand gslv launch vehicle so when we are talking about gslv if you remember the discussion on pslv we talked about its four stages in this case you would not have four stages but you would have three stages and again the first stage will be a solid stage the second stage will be a liquid stage but here your third stage will be a cryogenic stage so first of all we need to understand what do we mean by a cryogenic stage and how does this cryogenic stage make a difference here so talking about cryogenic stage cryogenic stage comes from a word called as cryogenics if we break up this word this comes from cryos which means frost in greek and when you talk about genic you are talking about a process so we are talking about a science that works at very low temperatures sub zero temperatures and especially in the case of an engine that runs on cryogenics we are talking about minus 150 degree celsius to minus 250 degree celsius so these are very low temperatures and building this technology is not easy but the indian scientists have been able to build this technology with success so how is mark 1 mark 2 and mark 3 different from one another so if we talk about mark 1 when we talk about mark 1 when we talk about mark 2 and when we talk about mark 3 how are they different so mark 1 was when we did not have our own technology we did not know how cryogenics work and that is when we used russian fuel the name of the engine was kdv1 mark 2 was when we started using the indian cryogenic fuel the name of the engine was ce 7.5 
mark 3 is when we have a better variant of the cryogenic fuel and still the fuel is indian the engine is ce20 why ce20 and ce7.5 because this produces 75 kN of thrust and this produces 200 kN of th thrust so this is one marked difference between mark 1 mark 2 and mark 3 secondly if you talk about in terms of height we can discuss here the height will be 49 meters here the height is more or less 49 it's 49.1 meters but here the total height is 43.4 meters so it's a little smaller than mark 1 and mark 2 the next difference is in terms of lift off mass that for mark 2 and mark 1 is around 415 tons but in case of mark 3 the lift off mass is 630 tons next if we talk about the payload carrying capacity so if we are talking about the lower earth orbit in this case the payload carrying capacity will be 4000 kg same for mark 2 as well for mark 3 also it is 8000 kg and if we are talking about the next higher orbit that is geo transfer orbit in that case the total payload capacity for them would be 2500 kg same would be the case for mark 2 as well 2500 kg but for mark 3 this is going to be 4000 kg so again you can see there is an increase in the amount of load it can carry one last difference is between the kinds of cryogenic that is being used for mark 1 and mark 2 as compared to what is being used for mark 3 so for mark 1 we are using staged cryogenic fuel same is the case for mark 2 as well we are using staged cryogenic fuel and when we talk about mark 3 we are using a technology of cryogenic that is known as gas generator cryogenic so this is another small difference between mark 1 mark 2 and mark 3 and what we have launched on june 5th is the variant of gslv which is known as mark 3 so what are the advantages of using this mark 3 how is it different from mark 1 and mark 2 so first of all we have already seen that the amount of payload it can carry is higher so if we take an example talking about the recent gsat 18 which was launched last year the total payload weight of gsat 18 was 3404 kg and we did not have gslv mark 3 then so we had to go to france and use their satellite launch vehicle that is arian 5 to get this launch done so now we have become self sufficient in this case now we can launch satellites up to 4000 kg for geo transfer orbit secondly if we talk about the cost if you talk about the cost compared to the other launch vehicles if we talk about arian 5 or another variant of the same that is arian 6 or if we talk about the satellite launch vehicle by space x that is known as falcon 9 Arian 5 and 6 cost around 90 to 95 million dollars. Similarly when you talk about Falcon 9 it normally costs us around 60 to 65 million dollars. But compared to that if you talk about GSLV Mark 3 GSLV Mark 3 is only going to cost around 40 million dollars. so we'll be saving a huge amount of money when we are launching these satellites from india another advantage if we have to talk about that would be in terms of manned missions what isro believes is that gslv mark 3 is going to form the base for future manned missions so that can be another advantage for us another advantage if we have to talk about that would be in terms of international market 
So when we talked about PSLV and how PSLV has been called as the workhorse of ISRO, that has been because of all the successes that PSLV has seen. Now, problem is, as we discussed, PSLV is for lower capacity satellites. So we have very well captured the market for low capacity satellites. But what about the medium range satellites? What about the satellites which are in the range of up to 4000 kgs? And that is where GSLV Mark III is going to be significant. Because as we already discussed, the cost for the other popular satellite launch vehicles are in the range of more than 60 to 70 million or more than 90 to 95 million in case of Arian 5 and Arian 6. Compared to that, GSLV is going to cost a lot lesser. So there are huge chances that other countries would now start coming to GSLV Mark III and start using the services of ISRO in case of the medium range satellites as well. So that becomes another advantage for us as far as GSLV Mark III is concerned. Now we have discussed what is PSLV, we have discussed what is GSLV and we have discussed what is GSLV Mark III. Now the last part of our lecture is about GSAT-19, the satellite that was launched using GSLV Mark III. First of all, what exactly is GSAT-19? So please remember, whenever you see GSAT word used, GSAT will mostly be used for any communication satellite. Similarly, this also is a communication satellite. And when we are talking about this specifically, it is a geostationary communication satellite. And why geostationary? Because it is going into the geostationary orbit, which is a kind of geosynchronous orbit. So what you will see is that people at some places will use geosynchronous orbit for this. And at some places they would use geostationary orbit. Please remember that when we are talking about geostationary orbit, it is a kind of geosynchronous orbit. So both the things are correct in this case because geosynchronous is the general word used and geostationary is the specific word or a kind of geosynchronous orbit. So it is a geostationary communication satellite. Secondly, the lift of mass and the lift of mass in this case is 3136 kg. So if you remember what we talked about GSLV Mark 1 or GSLV Mark 2, in all these cases, we were not able to launch payloads of such a high weight. So now with GSLV, we have a capacity to launch up to 4000 kgs when we are going to geo transfer orbit or beyond. So now talking about what is the significance of this GSAT-19. So if you see, it carries a geostationary radiation spectrometer which is to monitor and study the nature of charged particles and the influence of space radiation on satellites. So that see, what will happen is in future when we have to design components that will be used in these satellites, we should be aware of what we need to do, what should be the technological changes that have to be made so that all these space radiations etc. should not hamper any of your electronic components that are present in your space vehicle or the satellite. Secondly, it also carries miniaturized heat pipe, fiber optic gyro, micro electromechanical system accelerometer. So all these things are the things which are being tested right now. So that in future vehicles, we should be able to use these components and use these technologies as well. Thirdly, one very important point here is that it is a high throughput satellite. So when we talk about a high throughput satellite, what exactly do we mean? So if we talk about a traditional satellite, a traditional satellite is the one which will cover the entire area using a single beam, using just one beam. But in this case, when we are talking about a high throughput satellite, and especially in case of GSAT-19, we would be able to use up to eight beams at a time. And so that more transmission and reception can happen at a very concentrated level. And because of this, what will happen is, in general, all the internet speeds can increase. It can become much more smoother. It can become much more faster. And there is a possibility that it will also become cheaper. So that's why when we talk about GSAT-19, 
it is going to be a game changer for isro as the scientists from isro themselves call it secondly on similar lines our next satellite will be gsat 11 wherein instead of eight beams it would be able to use up to 32 beams at a time so if you see compared to what is happening right now compared to our traditional communication satellites the amount of data transmission and reception that would happen due to gsat 19 and in future gsat 11 that will increase by a huge extent so this is the main advantage and main feature of gsat 19 as well as you can also talk about gsat 11 which is going to be launched maybe by the end of this year or probably early next year so coming back to gsat 19 few things which you need to remember from this area first of all it is a geostationary communication satellite secondly the lift off mass is 3136 kg and thirdly this becomes a very important point that is it is a high throughput satellite and now we are moving into the direction of creating more and more of these high throughput satellites after gsat 19 as we discussed gsat 11 is to be launched and the thing about gsat 11 is that its total weight will be around 5700 kg so again we may not be able to use our existing gslb mark 2 or gslb mark 3 we most probably are going to go to france and get the launch done using the arian 5 or arian 6 launch vehicle because the requirement is little higher so this becomes one of the thinking points about isro also because now we have moved into the next level now from launching a low capacity satellite now we have moved into the medium capacity satellites also next we need to move into higher capacity launches that is we need to launch satellites into the gto or the geo transfer orbit with payload capacities of more than 4000 kg more than 5000 kg and even more than 6000 kg because on one hand what we are seeing is that all our remote sensing satellites are becoming lighter that is where pslv has to play its role secondly what we are seeing is that all our communication satellites are becoming heavier and that is where isro has to look after so that we should be able to launch our satellites which are heavier which is something like your gsat 11 so we should be able to launch these kind of satellites also in future and obviously isro also is working on it as the scientists themselves said that this is going to be the first step when we are talking about gslv mark 3 this is going to be the first step now we are going to try and increase the payload capacity of gslv mark 3 also so that we should start becoming self sufficient in case of the heavier launches as well so what did we discuss today first we discussed what is pslv and what are the various variants of pslv then we discussed gslv and the variants of gslv and specifically we talked about gslv mark 3 and the advantages of gslv mark 3 then finally we discussed the things about gsat 19 that was the payload that was carried by gslv mark 3 launch and the main features and advantages of gsat 19 as a satellite i hope the lectures were helpful thank you for watching